Well, good morning, Georgiana. Welcome to this week's Take 5. I hope you had an amazing July 4th, however you celebrated that. And we're going to continue in Paul's letter to the Colossians today. So our text today is Colossians 3, 23 through 25. It says this, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. So you may have heard this text before. You may have at least heard this general idea before that whatever we do, we should do it as if we were doing it for the Lord. And this this is this is great. This inspires us to integrity and hard work and, and whatever we are about. So we're not working to impress our bosses. Uh, we're not working to impress our coworkers. If we are working for the Lord, then that should inspire us to all integrity and, and, and to uh, a great work ethic and things like that. And, and this is this is wonderful, even just like that. Uh, but this this piece, the scripture right here, comes in a larger section where Paul is giving instructions for really what the Christian household should look like. So you got to remember, these are folks who are kind of early in the first century. They're trying to figure out what it looks like, kind of in the face of a larger Roman uh, Greco-Roman culture. Uh, what does a Christian household look like? How does faith in Jesus change even what the prevailing culture might say that we need to be. And so speaking of prevailing culture, let's kind of zoom out a little bit. Uh, there's an idea in the surrounding culture, and I would just call it, there's an idea of patron gods. And so what I want to talk about just for a minute is how we make this shift from patron gods to a personal God. So let me back up. A patron God is this idea that each culture, sometimes a, a kingdom or a nation or a city might have their own God or gods. And that God was there to protect them, to keep them safe, uh, to bless them in war, things like that. And all you had to do, all you really had to worry about was making sure that you kept that God happy. I would say it's kind of like having a pet dragon, right? If you have a pet dragon and you keep it fed and you do all the things that you think it wants you to do, then things will go well for you, right? It's powerful. It can defeat enemies. It's a great tool to have, right? But if you don't keep that pet dragon fed, it may, it may turn out pretty bad for you. And this is kind of the general idea of having a patron God. As long as you worship that God and made sacrifices and made sure it felt honored, then things would go well for you. And then when you didn't, that's when things calamity began to happen. This is their, their belief system about their gods. But Christianity, and really the God of the Bible, moves us from an idea of a patron God who just simply wants the sacrifices and the honor to a personal God who actually cares what kind of person you are. So the God of the Bible actually cares who you are, who you are becoming, how you actually live your life. So if you keep a pet dragon fed and happy, well, they don't care about how you live your life. You can do whatever you want as long as you do for them what they need, right? And this is, this is patron gods. But now the God of the Bible says, no, I care about who you are. I care about how you organize your household. I care about how you actually do your work. I care about how you treat your spouse and your children and those who work for you. And this is a really, really big shift back in the first century. And you even kind of see it rippling throughout the first centuries of uh, Christianity. Uh, they begin to wrestle and struggle with this tension of a patron God who only cares about uh, the worship and the sacrifices to a personal God who actually cares about me and how I live my life. And so right here in Colossians, uh, Paul is, is, is basically letting his followers know, letting Jesus, these Jesus followers know that God cares about what they do and God cares about how their household uh, is organized. And right here, God cares about how you even do your work. And if you do your work as if you are doing it for God, then that is going to create the person in you that God wants to create. So I would ask you this, what kind of God do you serve? Do you serve patron gods where you think, okay, as long as I, as long as I do this outward, you know, shows of worship on Sunday, and maybe I give generously every now and then, then it doesn't really matter what else I do in my daily life. Or do I serve a personal God? Do I serve a God who cares about what I do in my own house? Who cares about what I do with my job and my career? Do I serve a God who cares about what attitude I have in the little league field, right? 
Do I serve a God who actually cares about what I do when I'm standing in a really, really long, slow moving line, right? At Publix or wherever else. Do I serve a God who cares about how I treat other drivers on the road? Friends, we serve a God who is a personal God to us, not just for us personally, but a God who cares about the person that we are becoming through him. And so I would encourage you th this week to begin to reflect on the idea that God wants to make you into a better person. God wants to make you into the person that he has truly designed you to be. It's not about just kind of placating a pet dragon out there somewhere. God cares about the person that you are becoming. I love you, church. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.